Oh, hello, this is Colin. And on today's tea, we're going back to the early days of tea in Europe. Now, uh, it was the Dutch who started importing teas in quantity into northern Europe. And, they, of course, they expanded their markets beyond their borders, um, selling to England and particularly to parts of Germany. Now, tea was actually introduced into Germany by a Dutch a physician, a doctor, who uh, was working at the court of the elector Frederick William of Brandenburg, uh, Brandenburg, which was going to become later on Prussia, and he uh, introduced tea to the uh, court. And uh, once again, you to note two things about the early days of tea in Europe is that only the very rich, the aristocracy, could actually afford to drink it. And also, it was considered a medicine more than almost anything else. In fact, the good doctor Cornelius Bontko, not sure if that's pronounced right, uh, recommended drinking a hundred cups of tea a day to maintain good health. Now, of course, the teacups were generally smaller then, but still, you'd be spending a lot of time in the bathroom. So, <clears throat> it was uh, supposed to prevent gout, uh, stomach problems, and tea was apparently a cure for flatulence. Something in my own case I haven't actually found to be true. But, of course, uh, Germany today is, is, is mostly a coffee drinking nation, except for one part of Germany, which is East Friesland, which uh, hardly surprising. It borders uh, Holland. Actually, West Friesland is in Holland. And uh, one reason why tea took off there was because the water apparently is really bad to drink. This is something that, that we tend to forget. I mean, when you travel, you notice that the water tastes different than the stuff you're used to at home. Now, we all should try and remember that very often water was simply undrinkable unless you boiled it. So if you're going to boil it, you might as well stick some tea in it. Uh, now, the Friesland tea is quite a strong one. It's uh, two-thirds of Somme, uh, one-third Salon, so it's fairly simple. But the Frieslanders love their sugar. Um, they used rock sugar that would sort of melt in the tea that would you know, give you a sweet taste over time. Um, and particularly in the early days, uh, the tea was drunk with rum. Um, later on, they would soak the rock, salt, rock sugar in rum for a few months and then put it in the tea. Uh, also heavy cream and eaten with uh, cookies or cakes. So you got to ask yourself, are the Frieslanders actually drinking tea or they're just getting a sugar buzz? Because uh, <laughs> it was just full of sweetness. Um, and the Frieslanders took to tea, drinking it morning, noon and night to such an extent that Frederick the Great of Prussia tried to have it banned. Was it? Um, 1777, Frederick the Great decided that people were health were suffering from drinking all this tea and that they were spending too much time just sitting around drinking tea and, and enjoying themselves and eating their cookies and being idle. So he wanted to ban tea. Well, the Frieslanders weren't going to have that, so that, that never actually took place. And in fact, in 1906, the of Frieschisch Teegelsarschaft, or the East Frisian Tea Company, was formed. And to this day, the drinking of tea is a big part of the Frieslanders, East, East Frieslanders' uh, identity. So, cheers. Or, um, I don't know, Guten Tag? Something like that. Cheers.